Hello, I'm Ethan Faneff here with me, who's Chris me? Nix. Oh, okay. AK Food Booty. Who are you? Austin. Austin who? Thomas. Okay then. Um, so today we are doing... Word of the day first, man. Word of the day first. Okay, what's the word of the day? The word of the day is consult. What's the definition for the word of the day? To take advice. Alrighty, so today we're doing something interesting. We're doing a little bit of a... If anyone's seen First Take, you'll know what this is, but... So, we gotta come up with a better name. Uh, any ideas? I think we're gonna go with Sports Hub. We're gonna go back to Sports Hub. Sports Hub. Top Prediction News it's Sports our, Hub. It's already sports a lot of hubs. Hub. But we're the Sports how Hub. About, we'll, how about we just consult the other Sports Hub and tell we'll, them we're we'll taking their We'll consult something. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Consult Hub. All right, so... The Hill Hub. The Hill Hub. All right, I like that one. so... Today, we're gonna be doing a little bit of kind of debating or agreeing on whatever you two believe in. And I'm here to moderate the situation. So, I'm gonna bring up a topic. I'm gonna give you each 60 seconds. And you're gonna share your opinion about it. You ready? Uh, I'm thinking of a number between one Four. and five. What's your number? Three. Three, Austin got it, so he gets to go first. Okay. Alrighty, Austin. How do you feel about the Tennessee coaching search due to the firing of John Curry. And Honestly, go. I, I don't believe they gave John Curry enough time. I believe that he should have he should have had more time to figure out his team and put more pieces in. I mean, his, he had a hurt quarterback and his team didn't get put in the right situations to win. And I think that's something that has to come along with having a young quarterback and having two quarterbacks and not even having your starter in. I think that they'll become a better team. They were they would have became a better team had he gave been given one more season, and that's just strongly how I believe. Well, you got 30 more seconds. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the situation? I think that um, it's going to be tough finding another another coach that can deal with the pressure that Tennessee puts on them. You know, to find a good coach, mm -hmm. and I think that it's going to be a major problem. You know, put, putting someone there to fit that situation there. Yeah, into to the like city. fill the void. Basically. Alrighty. Well, since you got five seconds left, he's Austin Thomas. That's his opinion. So, moving on. And let's start. Alrighty. Chris, uh, how do you, and your minute starts right now. Well, first of all, the athletic director at Tennessee is a, the worst athletic director I've ever seen in my life. The team, this is by far the worst Tennessee team I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of bad Tennessee teams before. Bush Jones took them to a bowl game where they beat Iowa State, I believe. No, they beat Iowa. They beat them bad. And that was before John Curry was hired. So I believe that he he's really ruined the program. I mean, Bush Jones isn't the best coach ever, but he truly, he, he, gave, he gave those boys a chance. He brought in some of the top recruits he had. They were playing hard. But once you brought in this AD that nobody respected, all the... All of their respectfulness just went out the window. Like Rashawn Galden at the Alabama game throwing up double middle fingers to the crowd. You can't have stuff like that. As an athletic director, you have to you have to get on these players, stay on these be, players as hard as you can. Control of the team, yeah, what they but, do. And for some one of your players, one of your uh, upperclassmen actually, to go in the stands and just do something like that, you that's that's something as an athletic director that absolutely cannot happen. And that's why I feel. All right, I hate to cut you off, but your time's up. Uh, okay. Alrighty, so. Now, moving on, um, our next topic we're going to be talking about is the SEC Championship. The teams are Auburn versus Georgia on Saturday, December the 3rd. So, um, since Austin went first the last time, you get to go first this time, Chris. And who, before we start, who do you think is going to win? I'm most certainly going for Georgia in this one. Going for Georgia? Yes, sir. Are you just saying that to get Coach Burton's appreciation of um, you? Or do not you at actually all. Think not at all. Going? I just... All right, well, I'm going to start your minute, and you can explain why. You ready? Right. Three, two, one, go. Well, first of all, I just really hate Alabama. I don't hate them for any specific reason. It's just they just win too much. Okay. Like, no team should be that dominant for so long. And because of that, I think Georgia should. Patriots. I, I want Georgia to win because if Georgia wins, Alabama, it would be hard for Alabama to make the, um, the jump into the top four. So that's why if Auburn wins, Alabama could possibly make it with other, uh, with other circumstances. But... I feel that Georgia has a good game to win, well, um, a good chance to win this game. Last time they played, uh, Auburn beat them pretty bad, but I believe Georgia was at was at their stadium. So, I mean, if Georgia just comes up there and play like they did all season, 
then they should strongly be they should be strongly ready to come out and compete and make it to the top four of the college football playoffs. Yeah, so you think that Auburn or Georgia, my apologies, mm -hmm. is a top contender. Georgia is if they make it into the top four, then I don't think they'll they'll win it. They'll go they won't go to the national championship. But I believe that they could make it into the top four and play Alabama. Well, thank you for your opinion, Chris. Mm -hmm. Moving on to Austin. So, you who do you think's gonna win? I have Auburn actually in this one. Really? Yeah. We got debate going on, people. Um, all right, so tell me why you think Auburn's gonna win in three, two, one, go. Honestly, Auburn front seven, they're so dominant. They're going at you every time, they're hitting hard. It's almost ridiculous to see how aggressive they are without even using a blitz package every time. I mean, the way they came at them the two weeks ago, I mean, I just don't expect things to be any different. Auburn's played in so many different like stages that they they've seen what it what it takes to be the best. They've been there. I mean, wasn't it like 2013, 2012 when they won it? With, I mean, no, 2011 when they won with Cam Newton, and they had a strong year. I think that they're gonna come at them pretty hard, and they're not gonna give Georgia an easy win. They're coming hard for that spot. Um, you can't bring up Cam Newton. That, that hey, was so hey, long hey, ago. Hey, you had your minute. Uh, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was so long ago, but I think that. Auburn every year is in contingency, but this year is going to be a strong year for them, and I think they'll be able to, to put to beating on Georgia. I was going to get stumped. Yeah, so, well, all righty then. And I'll cut that off right there. And so, Ask me how I feel you're going for Auburn, Auburn, and you're going for Georgia. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be an interesting game, we can say that much. It's going to determine how the rest of it's going to go. All righty. So let's just reset the timer. I'm sorry, gotta let it go off. Alrighty, so now on to the ACC championship. Since Chris went first last time, Austin, you're going first this time. Who do you think's gonna take it? It's Clemson versus Miami on Saturday the 7th. I think that Miami is gonna, is gonna come out strong. Alrighty, well, here we go. I'm gonna start your timer golly. and you're gonna explain why. This is his minute. <laughs> Gee golly. It's his minute, Chris. You understand? <laughs> Alrighty, here you go. I think Miami's gonna start out strong, even though Clemson is a strong team, and I and I can completely agree with that. That Miami's gonna come out with the chip on their shoulder. After they lost that last game, I think they have something to prove. And that turnover chain, they coming for it on boys. So go somebody need to give me a chain like that. I think that defensively. They're so strong that they're not going to let Clemson just constantly throw it over the top of them. Their corners are strong with, with, some, with some young freshmen and some high, highest mid contenders back there, actually, that I could see that they're going to have some time to really compete this year. I think they're going to beat them pretty bad. All right. And I just don't see them having a chance. And that's very bold. You think that's going to be like the underdog situation? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to give you my score prediction right now. Really? All right. Yeah. What is it? 28-17. 28-17. Miami. Wow. Miami. Alrighty. So that's Austin's prediction. Alrighty. Here we go. Your turn. I'm going for Clemson. You're going for Clemson. All in. Woo! Alrighty. Explain why either Austin's wrong or that Clemson's just so dominant. All right, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Well, first off, I just want to say that 28 to 7 team 28 17 that's by far one of the one of the craziest things I've heard all day Clemson's <laughs> gonna come out and beat this team badly I don't Clemson see has a chip on their shoulder since that's losing to Syracuse they haven't lost ever since Miami just took a tough loss to Pittsburgh although Pittsburgh Pittsburgh's not the best team but they'll, they'll still get people run for their money but the way they played in that game, it was terrible. They went between two quarterbacks, back and forth, back and forth. And Clemson just had one of the best quarterbacks in the country all year. I mean, his stats, his stats prove it, but his numbers, I mean, his play, it's, it's okay. It's nothing that just stands out, but he gets the job done. And they're 11 and one, number one in the country. They're not number one for, any, for no reason. Clemson has one of the best resumes in the country. And if they make it to the top four, if they stay in the top four, which they will, They'll play probably Alabama or someone of that well, caliber. 
Thank I'm not going to continue head. to. We're, we're moving on. I'm not going to continue <clears throat> to entertain your ignorance, Christopher Nix. 28-17 is pure ignorance. All right, well, um, really quick, before we move on, what's your score prediction? 35-21. 35-21. All right. How about the next time after both these games, or after this game, we have a little bit of a, like, he has to come out and say, Chris was right. And if issue, he's right, I want him to issue an apology. Issue an apology. On You're hearing Topper that right News. here on Topper Nation he has to issue News. An apology. No, on, this is blasphemy. <laughs> blasphemy. All right. Well, if he's right, you got to issue an apology. But if, what do you want if you're right? I want your jersey. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, just give me an apology too. An <laughs> apology. All right. So. Topper Nation news in the near future, you're gonna see an apology. And it, hey, and if Auburn wins, I want George, I want Mr. Georgia to come right here on the show. <laughs> Mr. Georgia with the Georgia gear on. No, he he's got to come with some Auburn gear. He's got to wear an Ooh, Auburn hat. Yeah, I'll take that. Or we All can right. put a big X over that Georgia jersey. Over that Georgia. Alrighty. Well. Never. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on now. On to college basketball. Anybody have any thoughts about it? Um, I actually do. All right. So I want to ask Austin the question. Um, All righty. Do you believe that Duke looks like the number one team right now? Well, Marvin Bagley, I got to give it to him. They're not the strongest team, but they have the best player in the country. Yeah. Marvin Bagley is so dominant this year. He's definitely an NBA all-star. I could just see it. I mean, the kid is a number one pick. No doubt about it. He's so strong down low. He dominates, he dominates game after game. He never ceased to come to give up. Even when they're down, he's coming hard. 35 and 10, 23 and 10. It doesn't matter. The kid's a double-double magnet, and I can see he's a future number one pick. You see him as a future number one pick from Duke. So who are you taking? You know, DeAndre or Marvin Bagley? Because of his ceiling, I gotta take DeAndre. Cause DeAndre, I mean, uh, DeAndre is so versatile. He's a seven-footer with, with some good range. He, he defends well around the basket. And, I mean, the kid's potential is almost equivalent to Joel Embiid's. I mean, in some ways, in some ways they do play similar. They both have the outside game, they both have the lowest post game, but I think what separates the two is just maturity. All right, so, all right. So, really quick, let's talk about some school things going on before anything else. So, the dance recital, uh, they're doing another part tonight. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't they have a show yesterday? Yeah, they had a show mistaken? yesterday. Yeah, it was a solid show. Yeah, a lot some of friends showed yeah. me some clips. It was a good show. I, I think they put their heart and soul into that show. And uh, the um, Knox Catholic we mm -hmm. got to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you take that one because I don't know much about it. Uh, I, well, also, we have a basketball game. Oh. I totally forgot about that. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, that hurt, man. Oh, that hurt us. That that hurt us. Man, I don't know any basketball players. That hurt us. I mean, I can't think of any. And we have our first mm. five eight. We have I our can't first... put my finger on anybody that's a basketball player. <laughs> oh, God, it's so hard. Whatever. It's nobody important. Our first state championship uh, game. We have Knox Catholic winning. Is that is that correct? Yep. Knox Catholic winning the football championship or five eight state championship. Alrighty. They beat Beach, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're correct. Cool. Hey, what about one more thing I could throw out? My boys at the state that tonight. Kane Ridge, playing for the state championship. Alrighty. Ooh. Against Maribel at seven. Turn it on on the channel two. So that's all for my TV. 30. My TV thirty. My TV thirty. My apologies. Alrighty. Well, if you don't got cable now, go get that free my subscription we got Comcast. Some. Now I'm gonna shoot it over to Topper Entertainment News. They're gonna take it away with some hype stuff. Over to Topper Entertainment News. All right. All right. Here we go. Hey guys, I'm Zach. I'm in for Evan today on Topper Entertainment News. I'm uh, supposed to have a co-host, and uh, he's supposed to. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> well, he's here. I'm here for FNAF. Oh, sorry, it's a big studio. Um, yeah, I'm super hyped to talk about this. The Infinity War trailer. Marvel's Infinity War trailer. It's already grossing uh, 60 million views, I believe. Oh, 60 million views. God, yes. that's more than Justice League in its opening weekend. In two days. In, in two, two day. days. Yes. 60 million views. 
Oh my god, what a trailer. Yes, amazing. Probably I, the best one Marvel has had. That is in the recent. only other trailer I can think that was as good as that was the Civil War trailer. Yes. If but not if not equal to it. If not equal. It might even be better. Probably. Because the I only reason the Civil say. War trailer was great was because of that Spider-Man appearance. That yes. Made. That was amazing. But speaking of Infinity War, if you haven't seen the trailer, watch it now. Yes. This is free promotion, Marvel. We're get not off, Get off this video, click on it right Pause now. Pause it right now. We'll even wait a second. Okay, you watched it? You okay. watched it. Okay, now it we're going to awesome. talk about it. Thanos. Oh my god. Yes. Alright. He's going to wreak havoc. He's going to destroy Thanos. everybody. Yes. Now, if you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok, we're going to talk Highly about it a little bit. advise you watch that. Watch this Before movie. you see Infinity War. Because there are a couple movies you need to see before Infinity War. Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok. And almost a lot of these Marvel movies are hinting at Infinity War. That's what the Infinity Stones have been about. That's what the Tesseract is. It's an Infinity Stone with a casing around it. Yeah. So, this movie is going to be so big. Oh, yeah. Now, it's, I mean, it's probably going to it's break box office. Box office records, so. Yeah. So, here's what... Well, we're going to talk about this more. We'll have a segment later on talking about this when we get more info about it. But that that's all we can talk about today because nothing yeah, else really big sadly, happened. unfortunately. So, I... Man, I'm so excited to talk about it. I'm Ethan Feneff. I'm Zach Waring. And this has been Topper Entertainment News. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a great weekend. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye.